Last week, my aunt jokingly asked me if I was going to write a speech about the magic of following your dreams. And maybe if I went to a different school, I would have. But having read Boethius, I plan to talk about something completely different. Many speeches call for graduates to rise to the top and not stop until they've reached the pinnacle of greatness. They call graduates to make a name for themselves, to reach powerful positions, and to accumulate wealth. However, one of our class's favorite books has something completely different to say on this matter. Boethius was a 6th century Roman consul and philosopher who was imprisoned and executed by the king of the Ostrogoths for charges of conspiracy. While in prison, he wrote The Consolation of Philosophy, where he said, Nothing is miserable unless you think it's so. And on the other hand, nothing brings happiness unless you are content with it. Boethius did not believe a fame, power, or wealth could bring lasting happiness to life if they were pursued for their own value. One would always be left wanting more. Instead, he believed contentedness was the source of lasting happiness. In Philippians 4, 11-13, Paul writes, Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Paul was able to be content in all circumstances. He was able to experience the true happiness which Boethius references because of Christ who is working in him, giving him joy. My fellow graduates, I sincerely believe that you all should strive for and will achieve great things. You may have power, you may have wealth, and you may have fame. God will use you in amazing ways to fulfill his purposes on earth. But I want to call you to be joyful in your journey, content through the different stages of life, through the power of Christ who gives you strength. For students enrolled at Providence, this is a call to value the gift that this school is. Although it is easy to get lost in the monotony of each day or be blinded by stress, don't let routine cause you to miss the dedication of the people who are pouring into you every day. Don't miss the teachers who give up so much, driving cars that barely work, even working extra jobs, to be able to pass on the things that they believe are important for your life. Don't miss your parents who make sacrifices of time and money to send you to a school where they believe you will succeed and grow as a person. Providence is one of the greatest gifts I have ever received, and looking back, I wish I had appreciated it more. In light of this, I would like to thank some of the teachers who have made our upper school years the amazing and memorable experience that they were. Mr. Dace, thank you for teaching us about the amazing diversity and order in creation and awing us with your Fortnite abilities. Providence will miss having you next year. Mr. Duvier, thank you for sharing your passion for ancient history and literature with us. I will never forget the time when you made us charge across Virgil so that we would get a better understanding of how the Greek hoplite warriors felt at Marathon. I will also take your dating um, advice to heart and make sure all my future boyfriends do not have wet fish handshakes. <laughs> Ms. Brewer, thank you for teaching us rhetoric, history, and literature over the years. You put in so much work writing your own textbooks to make everything understandable. I will never forget the time you tried to bribe us to go to sleep at retreat by singing Apple Bottom Jeans. I'm pretty sure it didn't work. Sorry about that. <laughs> Mrs. Bliss. Thank you for teaching us math through the years and being patient even when we felt like checking our calculus books at the wall. Thank you for always checking in and asking us how our weekends were even when you got only vague and very sleepy answers. Mrs. Rodlowski, thank you for teaching us chemistry freshman year and being so invested in us that you invited us to your house for the cool chemistry cookout. Mr. Matul, thank you for teaching us Greek and causing us to learn more about the churches and doctrines and practices and theology. However, I am not thankful and never will be thankful for the habanero pepper challenge. <laughs> and Mr. Buckles, thank you for teaching us literature, rhetoric, and logic through the years. Thank you for always being so kind and for bringing us donuts and chocolate milk on chocolate day. <laughs> and Mr. Keating, thank you for your instruction and counsel throughout the years, from coaching basketball to teaching us history and how to engage with hard questions in theology. Your investment and care into each of your students has changed our lives for the better. I would also like to thank my class for all the last care and forgiveness they have given me and each other over the years. I have immense love and respect for every one of you, and I'm very excited to see what God has in store for your lives. And finally, I would like to thank my parents. Mom and Dad, thank you for sending me to Providence. Thank you for cheering me on through every struggle I faced. Thank you for encouraging me, guarding me, and protecting me. 
Because of the love you have given me, I am able to start to get an understanding of how my Heavenly Father loves me. Thank you to all the parents and mentors of this graduating class for all the sacrifices along the way that have led us to where we are. And finally, I'd like to leave you with a quote from Charles Spurgeon. He said, it's not how much we have, but how much we enjoy that brings true happiness.